Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and uh, there is a strange development afoot. Uh, you're going to hate that sentence once you realize what I'm talking about. Benedict Cumberbatch, a.k.a. Doctor Strange, facing fine for slave-owning ancestors. I'm going to say this out the gate. I'm sure you know, I think this is ridiculous. I think this is a farce. I also think that, given the left-leaning nature of so many Hollywood actors that he will absolutely be pressured into paying this and accused of things if he claims that it's not fair or he shouldn't have to. Or maybe he is also left-leaning and so deranged to think that, yep, this is something he owes and has to do. Um, these are just my assumptions we will see as we go through the article. So, yeah, let's get to it. Benedict Cumberbatch may face legal demands from Barbados for the actions of his slave-owning ancestors. It's very interesting. They very obviously picked a photo that makes him look like a stereotypical slave owner from, like, the southern plantation owner style like you'd see here in America in terms of, like, our after-school specials or movies or whatnot. It just, he looks like he's dressed in a period piece outfit. He might be. I don't know what this is from. It's just they chose this photo very intentionally is my point. Marvel star Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, a Marvel star? You don't want to talk about his great, groundbreaking role in Star Trek Into Darkness? <laughs> Maybe soon facing legal action, seeking reparations for his ancestors, who were wealthy slave owners in Barbados, according to the Daily Beast. In November 2021, the Caribbean nation became an independent republic after nearly 400 years of rule by the British monarchy, and is reported to begin seeking financial compensation from the descendants of families who made their wealth during the centuries of colonial occupation and slavery. Well, I'm 100% against this uh, already, because A, they're their own independent country now. Figure it out for yourself. It's not up to another country to uh, you know, subsidize and basically pay for you to be a wealthy nation at this point. That's just my thought process. But not only that, Benedict Cumberbatch had nothing to do with it, so he shouldn't have to pay for anything. I mean, yeah, did his family own slaves? According to this, yeah, they did. I mean, I don't know that it's true for sure, but I, I doubt that's made up. I mean, we know how colonization worked back then and whatnot, and the British were pretty proud of their colonizing ways, but I still don't think that means that the sins of the father, or in this case, the sins of the great-great-great-great-grandfather, uh, fall on the modern man. Let's keep going. As one of the most famous film stars in the world, Benedict Cumberbatch is likely to be a notable on that list. The government of Barbados recently announced plans to seek reparations from a member of the British Parliament whose ancestors owned Drax Hall, one of the few remaining operating sugar plantations on the island. If British MP Richard Drax refuses to voluntarily compensate the nation for the wealth taken by his slave-owning ancestors, the plan is to bring the case to an international court. Oh, I wonder how that would go, because I don't think... I, you'd have to know what countries are involved, how the justice system for that works, which, I'll be honest, I'm no expert on. I don't know that all countries are in this same woke mindset as America and the UK, though. I mean, a lot of first world countries are, but you know there's countries that aren't, like, you know, Japan is a good example of IDGAF countries when it comes to political woke agendas. In fact, pretty much all of Asia is like that, if I remember. I mean, Korea definitely seems like they're like that as well. So, well, here's uh, hoping for an Asian jury or whatever it's called in international court. At that point, if Barbados is successful, it will likely do the same to individuals like Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch has openly acknowledged that he is the descendant of Abraham Perry Cumberbatch, who became enormously wealthy from a slave-operating sugar plantation. Look, slavery was just the way of the world back then. Like, it, it's just a fact. Not necessarily even white to black sla slavery, just slavery in general. You captured your enemies. Well, they're slaves now. The idea that colonization was all about race and that slavery only had to do with whites is an idea that has never sat right with me. I mean, we know that African tribes would enslave one another. We know the Egyptians enslaved the Jews. Slavery just means forcing someone to be your servant. And I know that they so far haven't made it about race. It just, it, it bothers me that they're making it seem like, oh, this is an invention of the West, when slavery has literally been around since the, since the idea of commerce was even invented. 
The Doctor Strange actor has said his mother at one point suggested that he use a stage name to somewhat obscure his identity. In addition to his slave-owning ancestor, a number of people in his family were prominent members of British high society, and he is a distant cousin of King Richard III. I mean, that's a pretty cool, interesting fact about uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Nice little trivia there. You know, I could see that in, like, a movie theater trivia night. What famous member of British Parliament was related to actor Benedict Cumberbatch? Or, you know, something like that. But other than I don't know what that has to do with uh, the slavery aspect. It's just... I don't know. The stage name thing, I kind of get. But the other part of me is like, well, he shouldn't have to be ashamed of who he was or his ancestors past. No one should have to because it's not their past. Everyone has had some family members that probably did some shady stuff way back in the day because all humans have done shady stuff. Not only that, but if his name is as prominent as this article has led us to believe, then a stage name would probably make acting harder because he can kind of coast by on his high society name using the name Cumberbatch. I'm not saying that's what he did. I'm just saying I can see both sides of it. And either way, I don't think there's a reason to go with a stage name, so I think he made the right choice. As such, his fame and wealth may make him a prominent example for the kinds of individuals who may face financial consequences for the actions of their ancestors. And there it is. That shouldn't happen to begin with. You should not have to pay any sort of consequences, financial or not, for the actions of another individual. You did not commit the crime. You do not have to do the time. Like, it is that simple. I don't know if it's getting lost in British translation because they don't pronounce their R's and because they add extra U's in places where they don't need to be, but this shouldn't be an issue. Someone did something wrong in the past. That's acceptable. We all know this to be true. We accept it as a fact, and we move on. To punish someone else, years upon years later, financially, legally, however is inherently wrong, because they did nothing wrong. The concept of people like Benedict Cumberbatch being required to give reparations for wealth of their families earned by owning slaves is a very controversial one. It shouldn't be. And it will be interesting to see what actually happens in the future. Notably, while Benedict Cumberbatch's family no longer owns their former plantation, they were heavily financially compensated by the British government when the UK slavery was abolished in 1833. Okay, so worst case scenario, if you want to make an argument, the British government should be paying these individuals, not the family members of the slave owners. I don't even, I think that's a stretch. I don't think anyone should be paid because the past is the past. You weren't a slave. You were never owned. Therefore, there's nothing for you to, you know, <laughs> nothing for you to compensate because you didn't experience it. Um, I mean, yeah, you can maybe make an argument in the case of like, well, if a husband and a wife are married and the husband dies, the spouse gets an insurance payment so she can continue to live and, and adjust and whatnot. And yes, that's almost a fair argument, but those are two people coexisting at the same time that just because the husband dies doesn't mean the wife isn't affected emotionally, financially, anything to that effect. So the individuals that are living now, you can make the argument are affected by the actions of those from the past, but even that's kind of a stretch because there's no way to prove what would or wouldn't have happened had certain actions not occurred. You get into this weird butterfly effect style thing. Like, if a husband dies suddenly, well, we know what would happen if the husband didn't die. He would immediately be able to continue providing for his family. He would be able to continue paying bills, his wife being able to live. Or vice versa. If you don't like the husband-wife analogy, all right, two husbands, two wives. Wife dies and the husband has to live. So, point is, if a partner dies, uh, yeah, it's very, very easy to say so-and-so would have happened if this person didn't die because it's an immediate effect. When you try and backdate that and say, oh, man, these people could have been a whole lot more well-off if they were never slaves or maybe they would have been a first-world power. Maybe they would be happier and have this technology. Like, just whatever argument, it's all hypothetical what-ifs. We don't know what the world would have been like had they not been enslaved, because that's the way the world was. So by trying to backdate it and say, all right, now the government has to pay for what the, you know, hundreds of years ago government did to these people. Now the individuals have to pay for what the hundreds of years individuals had to do to these people. We don't actually know what would have changed within that hundred year span if this never happened. Uh, that country could be in a worse place, they could be in a better place. Who knows? The idea that my thought process is, hey, you got your independence now? Roll with it. 
to my knowledge, and this could just be my ignorance of my own country's history, but to my knowledge, we didn't get any benefits from UK for beating them in the war and getting our own independence. We decided, all right, we're free now. Time to work our way up and become a superpower by our own merit. Um, and occasionally, maybe we'll work with other countries to get stuff done. Britain didn't just be like, all right, you won. Here's a million bucks as a startup. Small loan of a million British pounds. Like, that, just, that didn't happen. So why should it happen in the case of this country? First part, Barbados states that the funds given and reparation will be used to help develop the infrastructure of the island nation. See, exactly. They're going to be using other individuals' money that had no dog in this fight who didn't do anything to build up their own country. They're basically trying to skip the line and say, instead of our own hard work and trying to figure out exports and joining the United Nations and doing all this stuff that a country should do to work its way up the ladder, they want to jump the line by taking someone else's money to fast-track that stuff. It's like they're hopping on the Disney Plus Genie to get priority line access. Sorry, you plebs have to wait for Rise of the Resistance. We're getting on first. Like, no, no, no. You wait in line just like everybody else. You don't need to take someone else's money to fast track yourself. It's a, it's mentalities like that that have put us in the cultural situation we're in. And it's nice, but also sucks to see that it's not just an American thing. That it seems to be a worldwide mentality. Benedict Cumberbatch has not commented on any impending reparation requests, though he has often disavowed the actions of his ancestors, to the point of alluding to his role in the drama 12 Years a Slave might have been a kind of contrition. Currently, Benedict Cumberbatch has been announced to appear in at least one more Marvel Cinematic Universe movie as Dr. Stephen Strange, the much-anticipated Avengers Secret Wars. Likely, he will appear in more MCU movies between now and the release of Secret Wars in 2026, barring the increasingly frequent delays of the film releases, as well as a number of non-Marvel projects. Benedict Cumberbatch has been announced to play the character in The Wonderful World of Henry Sugar, based on the works of Roald Dahl and directed by Wes Anderson. Oh, Stephen Strange! Benedict Cumberbatch in a Wes Anderson film? I'm down, especially one based off Roald Dahl. Oh, yeah. That that sounds far more interesting than anything Marvel-related. Putting that on the list. Also, with it being a Wes Anderson movie, it's really up in the air whether it'll make money or not, and uh, he might not be able to pay those reparations if you don't get a paycheck from that film. But, yeah, all in all, it's, um, it's a really, really stupid situation. I hope that what comes of this is that he doesn't pay anything that he's never approached. I hope no one pays anything. I get it. Atrocities happened in the past. It sucks. That's part of the human experience. That's part of how the world grew and was created. This is not something new. This is how humanity has been for the better part of 6,000 years or more. Move on. Build your country up. Prove your worth with your own merits. Don't take money from other countries just because you should feel bad because your ancestors treated us awful. Like, I'm sorry, everyone's ancestors were treated awful in some way, shape, or form. Some had to go through the Great Depression here in America. Well, that was because of the government treating them awful and screwing up. Some people have immigrated. Their ancestors were treated awful back in their home countries. It's just part of the world. Things keep progressively and slowly trying to get better as we figure this out as we try and move further and further into the first world for all nations and countries. But there's a lot of nations and countries that are far behind. Is helping them a good thing? Yeah, but not at the expense of your own country, and definitely not when you're forced to do it by threat of holding the past over your head or guilting you into it. If, you're, if your country has the emotional stability to be able to help additional countries and get them going, dude, that, that's great. I'm pretty sure France did something similar for us here in the U.S., uh, at least ideologically, if nothing else, if not financial or anything to that effect. At least ideologically, France helped us. Now, the same can be done for Barbados. It doesn't need to strong arm any sort of European or Western country into giving them money so that they can skip the line. It's really that simple. Or maybe it isn't. If you've got differing views or just want to talk, let me know in the comments below about what you think. Or you can let me know on Twitter at BoltTheWord. And please like and subscribe. I'm working really hard on this channel, and I'm hoping for a big blow up in 2023. You can be part of it. So your subscription would really mean the world to me. I would much appreciate it. But until next time, this has been Words of Paradise.